it goes. It's something in your head that says this has to do with success. Now, religiously, we can say, no, Jannah is success. Dunya is not success. We know that. <laughs> I'm not talking about what you say. I'm talking about what goes on in your head. When you, when you look at stuff. When you think about stuff. And kids are a lot more honest than we are, you know? So I did this experiment with kids. And this is true of all of us, really. But I did this experiment with kids. I said, okay, guys, if we're walking down the street, and we see a guy who's homeless. He's living in a cardboard box. Right? And next to him is a gate. And in the gate, there's a guy who lives in a mansion. Really wealthy guy. Who do you think is successful? What do the kids say? Honest answer. They said the guy in the mansion is successful. The guy who's in the cardboard box is a failure. Who, the one who graduated high school is a success. The one who dropped out is what? A failure. The one who won the election is a success. The one who lost is what? A failure. We, we measure success and failure in these terms. The one who got the job is a success. The one who lost the job is a failure. The one whose big business thrived is a success. The one whose business tanked is a failure. This is how we measure success and failure. It's normal. It's, it's totally normal to think like that. But we are learning something very, very radical in this surah. We are learning that all of these are not the measures of success or failure. Having a lot of wealth, having things that you want to aspire for, having them is no sign that you're successful, and not having them is no sign that you're a failure. They have nothing to do with success and nothing to do with failure. Now look, let's take some, some ancient examples. You know how there's, a, I don't know if they still have the show, I saw it at a friend's house one time. They called it Celebrity Cribs. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But they go to famous people's homes and show you their homes, and like the custom multi-million dollar homes and stuff. Well, think about this. Who had the celebrity crib in ancient Egypt at the time of Musa alayhi salam? Fir'aun, huh? You could see his house from miles away. I mean, that's some pretty good architecture. It's still around. Right? It's pretty solid foundation. It's a world monument. One of the wonders of the... I mean, this is his crib. And yet, is he a success? One of the biggest examples of failure. When somebody's been able to save a lot of money, we say, this guy's doing okay. He's, you know, he's not in debt. He's pretty successful. He's got a good retirement plan. Look at Qarun in the Quran. Does he have a nice, big enough vault that people have to carry the keys to? Right? This vault is so big, forget the vault. Key has to be carried by multiple guards to go open the, the vault. SubhanAllah. But horrible failure. Then on the other hand, you have... You know, if somebody gets deported from a country, somebody gets deported... You would consider that a failure. It's pretty embarrassing and humiliating, isn't it? Was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expelled, literally deported from Mecca? He was. If somebody doesn't have a home to live in, and they have to live out in the woods, you know how in between your developments here, there's some patch of woods, and some guy's living in those woods. You would call that a failure. That's pretty, pretty pathetic. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to live in a cave. For a stretch period, no food, no plate. Eating off of shrubs. Sallallahu alayhi wa The greatest example of success, and yet he's living, and if you saw somebody living like that today, you would not think success. That's not what would cross your mind. If somebody gets kicked out of their home, they become homeless, it's a failure. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Does he get expelled from his home? He does. And yet, the, one of the greatest examples of success in human history. What are we learning from these examples? We're learning that the way we think about success and failure is not the way Allah wants us to think about success and failure. That's, it's completely different. And then when we, are, when we start rearranging our thinking, we learn something very critical about the society in which we live. And all of this is the message of this surah, by the way. In this society and in the world today, there are certain things that are defined as success and you are told that that is success over and over and over and over again. In other words, the wrong definition of success is bombarded at you constantly. You cannot so much as turn your computer on and a banner ad will show you to what kind of car you should get. And based on your searches, these are the stores that want to give you, you know, a discount. And what, the billboard will show you what kind of house you should buy. Advertising in every way, shape or form, being pumped towards you. Even among our parents and our elders, among our youth, what college you should go to, what kind of job you should get, which neighborhood you should move to. Constantly we are being told what is success, what is success, what is success. 
over and over and over again. And you know, even if something is wrong, but it's said to you over and over and over again, what starts happening? You start believing it's true. You start get affecting, getting affected by it. If constantly people around you are telling you and convincing you that such a thing is success, then the other thing that happens is if everybody thinks that's success, how can, I must be crazy to think no. You know, if somebody says, Brother Norman, this is, a, this is an interesting concept, but nobody thinks like this. If you have the right to say, nobody thinks like this, seriously. Get real. That's exactly right. Just because nobody thinks like this, we have assumed that it's invalid. If this was so true, everybody would think like this. But the thing is, what we're learning is truth is not sweet. Truth is bitter. Here, and it's not about any action yet. We're not, I'm not telling you about any actions. We're just talking about a change of attitude. An attitude towards this worldly life. That's all we're talking about. A change of attitude. This world has nothing to do with success. This is not to say, by the way, to avoid confusion. This is not to say that this world is evil. After all, Allah says, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا He created for you whatever is on this earth altogether. It was for you. It was made for you. But then how do we reconcile these two things? What we learn is having wealth is not a bad thing. Having a nice car is not a bad thing. Having nice clothes is not a bad thing. But if you think that is success, then you have failed. What you, the, the, what you aspire towards is not dunya. Having dunya is not a problem. Loving dunya is the problem. Allah Azza wa doesn't talk against the one who has dunya. He talks about the one who is influenced by dunya. وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا He was, you know, the, the, the worldly life, he gave preference to it. If this becomes your preference, you know, you could be very wealthy and still not be in loss. It's, you could do that. And you could be very poor and still have dunya in your heart and you're still a loser. You're still in loss. This is, before we talk about anything material or on the outside, the first concern here is what is on the inside. So that's the, the issue of success versus survival. And we, we talked a little bit now about the rearranging our idea, our concept of what is success. Now that we've come to this point, the, the lesson to learn in this surah is all human beings are in a desperate need to survive. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Human beings are drowned in loss. Human beings are lost. They're in loss, immersed in it. What does that tell you? That tells you that there are no exceptions. There are no exceptions. Allah doesn't say, in al kafira lafi khus. Some of us commented, you know, an insan a al kafir. We'll talk about that. Like the human being, it's referring to the kafir. It's referring to the kafir if he is in khusr at the end. But you know, we find narrations of the Sahaba who were concerned about the first part of Surah Al Asr. When Surah Al Asr was revealed, Wal Asr in al insan lafi khusr. Those who only heard that much said, What are we going to do? Until the exception came and gave them relief, in al ladina. So this exception becomes critical because this becomes a matter of our survival. This becomes a matter of our survival. And if we don't address this, then there's no point talking about success. There is no success then. We have to rearrange our thinking in regards to the demands that are being placed on us in, regard, in, in terms of this surah. The last thing I want to share